Welcome dear learners. Today we are going to discuss about drought disaster management. So basically droughts are very deadly natural environmental hazards because these are directly related to one of the three basic requirements uh, any form of life uh, that needs like water, air, food. And indirectly uh, they are related to food Famines because crop and other plants, animals exclusively depend upon the water. Drought is basically a prolonged dry period in the natural climate cycle that occurs anywhere in the world. So there are many places which we'll be dis discussing further in this lecture in the world uh, which are drought prone areas. Drought is a slow onset of disaster characterized uh, by the lack of precipitation resulting in water shortage. And drought can have a serious impacts on health, agriculture, economies, energy and environment. Because most of our uh, activities, energy generation may be it or uh, maintaining the environmental flows and other uh, major industries they are dependent on the water so the major consuming sector of the fresh water in India is, and in world in general is the agriculture on the global scale 70 percent of the fresh water is consumed by the agriculture and 80 percent is consumed in India by agriculture so uh, definitely when any period uh, uh, any area is hit by the scarcity of uh, water or drought kind of situation definitely it will impact the agriculture and many other economies depending on agriculture or the directly on the water energy generation because when there is less flow of water in water streams definitely the water reservoirs will have less amount of water and less energy generation and definitely the environment will get impacted various types of plants and animals which are whole and soul dependent on the water will get impact and then can reduce in the biodiversity an estimate uh, from the united nation um, that uh, 55 million people globally are affected by droughts every year and they are most serious hazards to livestock crops uh, nearly in every part of the world so drought threats people, livelihoods, increase risk to the disease and death and uh, fuels mass migration. It can lead to the demographic changes. So in later on in this lecture, we'll be discussing what are the various impacts of the droughts. So water scarcity impacts 40% of the world's population and as many as 700 million people are at risk being displaced as a result of drought by 2030 means the drought kind of thing is going to be more serious problem in near future so we have to be very keen about various kinds of things that can lead to the reduction in the drought uh, situation so there are very vast kind of definitions uh, by the various authors given like uh, in uh, according to British Rainfall Organization absolute drought is when there is at least 15 consecutive days with less than 0 0.01 inch of the rainfall per day and same organization defined as a partial drought when there are at least 29 days having mean rainfall of 0 0.01 inches or less and dry spell is when 15 consecutive days receive less than 0 0.04 inches of rainfall so many other authors also like uh, v a cannot in 1944 he uh, defines the trot as a period of 20 or more consecutive days uh, without point Two five inches of precipitation in 24 hours during March or September. So there are lots of number of definition, lots definitions about drought, but the most uh, uh, applicable definition in Indian condition is as per the India Meteorological Department, and uh, which defines 
drought as a situation occurring in any area when the mean annual rainfall is less than 75% of the normal rainfall. So the India receives more than 1100 centimeters uh, or millimeters of rainfall. So if uh, the rainfall is less than 75%, definitely this is the drought like situation. IMD have further classified droughts into two broad categories like severe droughts when the deficiency of rainfall exceeds 50% of the normal rainfall and the moderate drought is when the deficiency of the rainfall is between 25 to 50% of the normal rainfall. So these were some definitions uh, about the drought. So to uh, to have an index of the drought severity, the Palmer index uh, is most widely used, which ranges from normally uh, from plus four to minus four. So there are more uh, if uh, the index is plus four or above, this means extremely moist or wet conditions. So if the index is uh, in between plus 3 to plus 3.9, that is very moist condition or very wet conditions. So the index A in between plus 2 to plus 2.9 is unusual uh, moist conditions or we can say it the slightly or moderately wet conditions. So at the end of the index that is uh, around less than minus that we call it extremely drought conditions. So when the index is below minus four, then that is called extremely drought conditions. So this was the index uh, of the drought severity. So the severity of the drought and its hazardous uh, nature largely depends upon the various factors. Uh, before discussing further what are the impacts, but the severity of the drought depends upon various other factors like the duration of the dry condition that leads to the drought. So in some definition, in some definitions they have mentioned, uh, like BRO have discussed 15 days, cannot have discussed 20 days, though this is the duration of the dry spell. So if the duration is more, then the severity will be definitely more. Degree of the deficiency of the moisture content. So if the uh, degree of deficiency is more, then the severity will be more. And the degree of drought, vulnerability and risk. Basically, these two vulnerability and risk, they are connected with the community that is uh, drought striking. So if the community have more vulnerability, Basically, if the community is more dependent on the surface water or uh, they are more dependent on the groundwater because they don't have the water reservoirs, so definitely that area uh, is highly vulnerable to the drops. If that area also don't have the forest cover, so foresters basically change the microclimate of the area. And the drought risk is basically when there is less occurrence of the monsoon rainfall or western disturbances. So definitely this increases or decreases the severity of drought. And the size of the affected area, if the size of the affected area is less, then it is quite manageable from the other areas we can have the water supply. But if the area is large, then it is quite difficult to manage uh, the drought at the time. So now we will be discussing the tribes of the drought. Basically, uh, drought has been categorized into four categories, such as meteorological drought, agriculture drought, uh, hydrological drought, and socio-economical drought. So these categories have been uh, framed based on the ratio between the long period average annual precipitation and actual precipitation of few years in continuation, uh, ratio between moisture content in the soil and requirement of moisture by crops for their growth and survival, ratio between surface and subsurface normal water shortage and actual 
water levels, actual uh, shortage of food and food supply due to crop failure and few continuous years. So the first one is a metrological drought. Metrological drought is basically prolonged period of less uh, than national average uh, annual precipitation resulting in dry condition in terms of metrological drought. It is evident that this drought is related to the precipitation factor. Then second one is agriculture drought. It is a prolonged period of shortage of soil moisture content resulting in crop failure, low crop yields, dust emissions uh, in terms and is termed by the agricultural drought. And the third one is hydrological drought, that is drought occurring during the lowering of the water reservoirs in the surface, rivers, lakes, ponds and subsurface aquifers like sh uh, shortage uh, much below the statistical average, say the normal levels. Uh, is called as hydrological drought. Then last one is socio-economical or social economical drought that this type of drought occurs when the supply of essential goods and services including water, food, food and hydroelectric power falls shortage of minimum demand. In such situation, consumption, consumers basically uh, have to pay more for food and other water sensitive items or products. So these were the various uh, types of the drought and uh, then we will be discussing about the impacts of the drought. So the first impact of the drought is the famine and human casualties. So basically the extensive prolonged drought in a country uh, where majority of the people depend on the Subsist, uh, subsistence farming resulting in shortage of water supply for irrigation and domestic purposes and livestock food fodder. Consecutive a famine condition sets in which the result people die of malnutrition and starvation basically and drought and heat related diseases such as heat strokes, dehydration, high fever, hyperthermia and these are uh, about five, uh, 50 lakh people have been killed uh, in the drought in, uh, during 1921 to 1922 in Soviet Union because of uh, the very high heat of the drought, very severe drought kind of situation. The second one is a demographic impacts. So the basically demographic impacts includes the regions and areas and temporary migration of drought affected people and animals in search of food and water or livelihood. So as an example, thousands of people in Sahel region, sub-Sahara region of the tropical Africa left their native areas because of the persistent drought conditions. So they can lead about to demographic changes. So in India, the migration uh, of the people from the areas of Rajasthan, Gujarat, and Maharashtra, and Andhra Pradesh, they also migrate to the other areas where they can find the uh, livelihoods easily, uh, food availability, water availability. So the third one is the economic impacts. The economic impacts of the drop include economic losses due to mainly uh, to the market decrease in agriculture production, livestock yields like uh, milk and flush, and even in industrial production because of the shortage of water supply. So the economic impacts also include losses due to reduced electricity production because of reduced water flows through the dams, short supply of water for the industrial uses, habitat damage affecting both terrestrial and aquatic life, forest loss due to wildfires also. Another one is the ecological uh, or uh, the environmental impacts. So the environmental impacts, uh, maybe it increase the desertification or desert spread uh, because of the drought and it can cause severe wind erosion of the top soil because of absence of moisture and soil moisture and uh, damage to the farmlands due to deposition of thick layer of sands 
and dust on the fertile topsoils caused by severe dust storms. And it can also cause the reduction and degradation of fish wild habitats, lack of food and drinking water, spread of disease affecting both humans and animals, increase in radiation due to acute shortage of prey. So there are lots of uh, impacts because of this uh, drought. These were the environmental impacts. So social impacts basically are the shortage of uh, water supply and food for the cattle for a prolonged period of time that can lead to the starvation. And it can clean the human lives because of the heat, stroke, suicides, of the, uh, because of the crop failures. It is very uh, common in India. Mental and physical stresses caused by the loss of livelihood and death of the family members frequent quarrels and conflicts for getting water and social unrest. So political conflicts within the country and among the neighboring countries can also be an uh, impact of the droughts. So on global level, there are certain regions which are really highly uh, hit by the drought in, uh, for example, the Sahel region. Uh, is a uh, region extending hot and dry areas of Sahara, basically the countries like the Africa through Senegal, Mali, Upper Volta, Niger, Nigeria, Chad, Uganda, Ethiopia, they are called Sahasal region. These are very highly hit by the uh, drought. And uh, Australia is also commonly hit by the droughts. And uh, in India also, uh, uh, and many other Asian countries like Afghanistan, Iran, Pakistan, India, Myanmar, Nepal, Sri Lanka, uh, Sri Lanka and Bangladesh and some parts of the China, they are highly hit by the droughts uh, and uh, further now how can we uh, do the mitigation and control of the droughts? Since uh, immediate negative impacts of the droughts uh, are on humans and hence the efforts should be made to understand the correlation between different types of the droughts and mortality in order to initiate effective measures. So for this, United Nations Development Program uh, developed a mortality drought risk model in 2004. Um, but because of certain reason, uh, reasons, this model was not successful. So under these control mitigation and control measures, first is the drought prediction and monitoring. So for this, uh, there are various steps to be followed. Uh, for example, careful and regular monitoring of meteorological and hydrological variables, such as uh, precipitation patterns like amount, variability, seasonal, spatial distribution of the rainfall, and soil moisture content, stream flows, and water of uh, volume of water in the rivers, lakes, and ponds over the time that can help in the tentative determination of uh, the onset of or end of the drought. Uh, in this, uh, we can also use a satellite remote sensing technology uh, for quantitative modeling and monitoring over the large coverage of the geographical areas. And also, the proper understanding of complex factors leading to the onset of drought should be understood, uh, should be understood uh, that leads to the onset of drought helping, which help, we can help in the reliable and credible monitoring of the drought. And understanding El Nino and La Nina, basically these are the global events because of which the surface uh, of the sea gets a little bit warmer that can initiate uh, rainfalls in certain areas but drought-like situation in many other areas. So there should be a continuous uh, monitoring, prediction, forewarning of such kind of uh, events that could happen on the global level and then can affect many countries. And then efforts should be uh, augmented to build effective models to predict multi-year drought as well as drought in extra tropical regions like Sahel region with accuracy 
because till now these droughts cannot be predicted with high level of accuracy. Then uh, the assessment of uh, vulnerability and risk in different community groups of people or to the different types of droughts. Basically, uh, the vulnerability is the, and the risk assessment. These are two main important factors that make us much prepared for the uh, various kinds of droughts. Besides, there should be restriction on outdoor, uh, I mean, uh, use of water that comes in uh, the preventive measures, basically. So the, this is the drought uh, prevention and preventive measures. First is the already existing measures to increase uh, air moisture, perspiration through anthropogenic activities, like we can go for the afforestation, deforestation, and cloud seeding for um, uh, that. I mean, these activities should be augmented and further strengthened. Then we should uh, go for the construction of the small dams, reservoirs that can store the water. Like in the many cities like Hyderabad, they have stored the artificial tanks in which they store the water. That water is used for the drinking purpose. Then efforts should be made to use seawater desalination. This is one of the uh, technologies where the water is uh, desalinated and used for various purposes, but it is very cost intensive method. Recording and monitoring of yearly seasonal uh, rainfall data, uh, water use data, infiltration of rainwater, recharge of groundwater, then poor land, uh, proper land use, crop management, restriction on outdoor use of water, rainwater harvesting should be ma made mandatory, and uh, other uh, measures that can uh, reduce the impacts of uh, the water shortage to the communities or the people such as uh, we can uh, go for the checking the desertification and desert spread water conservation schemes uh, should be their development of horticulture and pastures and there are many other things we can go for that so this was all about the drought disaster management thank you